Hi, everybody. This is Father Bill, and this is the Friday Reflection uh, for the fourth week of Advent. And you can see I got my uh, good Christmas tree there. Got that all ready to roll. I have to admit, this is my first time in a long time having a fake tree. But uh, and I've usually had a real tree. Uh, some prisoners had a tree farm in my previous situation. And they would cut a tree down and, and give me one. It was wonderful. A lot of work needed to be done by that uh, on my part. I sometimes even injured myself by picking it up wrong, you know, either hurting my back or even stretching the sternum muscles. And I, yeah, uh, obviously I'm not a weightlifter, so sometimes uh, that was problematic, but it was, it was so beautiful and smelled great, right? Uh, a lot of you may have a real Christmas tree. Well, my sister Marianne, she gave me this tree, and within five minutes, boom, it was put together and... Um, it was even lit already. Nice, huh? <laughs> Anyhow, <clears throat> I'm... Oop, get back to me. Here we go. Uh, I'm using my iPhone, and it allows to I me mean, to what's called uh, pull focus. And so if I touch a certain item, like the Christmas tree there, you pull focus there. Or uh, maybe behind me, you can see the, uh, the little balls on the table there. Yeah, and then uh, it can actually track me. Ooh, okay. Technology! Okay, so back on task. I have three points I want to offer you today. Number one, we're coming up. This is the last, and it's a full week of the last week of Advent, the fourth week. And as we get closer to that, it's important for us to, let's say, prepare. And one of those ways to prepare is knowing the schedule of our Masses. So the schedule of our Christmas Masses. Uh, Christmas Eve is 4, 4 p.m., 6 p.m., and then 9 p.m., so that's 4, 6, and 9 p.m. Uh, I understand that traditionally the first Mass, 4 p.m., is more kind of kid-friendly. So be aware of that. So if you're a family uh, with kids, that might be a good time to come. If you're uh, maybe a senior, maybe, I don't know, that may not be. Or maybe actually something you do want to make sure you're, you're there for. Uh, and then Christmas Day, the 25th, will be 9 a.m. Now notice this. Christmas Eve is on a Saturday, and Christmas Day is on a Sunday. Uh, next year is even stranger. But uh, Christmas Eve then it kind of scrubs the typical Saturday liturgical schedule. That means uh, right now there's no confession schedule because normally they would start at 4. Confession start at 4. And instead, Mass is starting at 4. So that's happening there uh, instead. No confessions. And that means also the Mass itself, Masses start early, an hour, an hour and a half early, 4 instead of 5.30. So if you're a Saturday evening Mass goer, and you show up at 5.30, you're probably going to end up actually going to the 6 p.m. second Christmas Mass, right? The Christmas Eve Mass. Uh, so anyhow, 4, 6, and 9 for Christmas Eve. And Christmas Day, which is Sunday, also Sunday scrubs the other Masses that are typically on a Sunday. We normally have, what, an 8, a 9.30, and an 11.15, right? So those are scrubbed in lieu of one Mass on Christmas Day, uh, on that Sunday, which is at 9 a.m. So be aware of that. So Christmas Eve, 4, 6, and 9, and Christmas Day, 9 a.m. And, of course, the perennial question is, <clears throat> when is the Midnight Mass? You wondering? It's about 9 o'clock. <laughs> 9 o'clock. Well, the Mass at night, there's actually not called the Midnight Mass anymore. Uh, a... The Mass at midnight would be like the first Mass for Christmas Day. And there's a standing tradition for lots of churches in that regard. Holy Trinity has a different tradition where we set them a little earlier uh, for the sake of families. And so the the readings are really the, how the, the church puts it together is a Mass during the day, a Mass on the eve, and the, or the Mass at night. So we'll be doing the Mass at night. And if you are interested, probably the 9 o'clock Mass is the closest thing we'll get to a Christmas midnight Mass. So it lets you know. Uh, so that's number one. Prepare your schedule for those things. Uh, again, next year it'll be kind of more wild because of how Christmas lands on uh, Monday. Anyhow, we will get to that. That's next year. We won't worry about that. Okay, number one. Number two, <clears throat> you might have noticed that I'm kind of scratchy, maybe a little bit nasally in my voice. Well, there's a good reason behind that is because I just i am getting over a cold. Um... I think it was last week when I was hearing confessions. I'm not sure. It's always a mystery. Um, I started getting kind of some symptoms late Friday, a week ago, and then Saturday, Sunday, I was taking Zycam and other kind of zinc-based lozenges, which allowed me to function pretty well. And I kept checking myself. I checked myself on Saturday, Sunday. 
and even Tuesday when I came back for work to see if I had COVID. Because at this point, COVID it looks very much like a, a bad cold or for lots of people. And I've been vaccinated five times. <laughs> uh, and um, my hope will be if I ever get COVID, it'll be mild and that could be just a cold. So I want to make sure I'm checking for that. Uh, fortunately, it is just a cold. And so that allows me to uh, have done the masses over the last weekend, but also serendipitously or providentially, thank God, uh, I've got it now, or I'm getting over it now, because that means I'll be more healthy for Christmas masses. And that's, that's, that's a high holy day, right? That and what's the other one? Besides Christmas is the most high holy day for Christians, it is? If you said Easter, you are correct. Okay, but that's coming up later in the year. That is in 2023. Number one. Number two. <clears throat> oh, well, that is actually preface. My cold is part of number two. Um, but that then reminds me, and I hope it reminds you about coming to Mass for Christmas. So part of the question of how we will come to Christmas, I want to encourage you to come home for Christmas. If there's been something in your way, I want to encourage you to not let that impede you. Now, obviously, if you are sick, that is a different story. Please know that we will be streaming the Mass uh, hopefully I'll know what mass that it is, and hopefully I'll, I'll put it up on the screen here. I'm not sure which one it is as I uh, record this, uh, but I'll ask Eric and, and I'll, I'll put it up on the screen here. Uh, so if you're feeling bad and you may be contagious, please, staying home is good, we will stream. Uh, but next one would be that when you do come to mass, and you, you may want to wear a mask, wear a mask at mass if you are cautious, if you're second guessing yourself, maybe you're feeling fine, but this has been, you know, you're not sure you're in a large group of people, uh, wearing a, a good N95 or KN95 mask are probably the best ways to do that. We have KN95 masks for you and they're colored for the season. So here's the wonderful thing. Um, I'm not a big fan of wearing a mask myself, but I do wear them. You'll notice probably I've been wearing one quite a bit uh, since I've been at Holy Trinity for communion so that people don't feel uh, cautious to come forward to receive communion. And I've decided I'm going to try to make it, uh, I'll accessorize, I'll put it that way. So I've wear, been wearing green masks when it's ordinary time or a white mask for instance, Saint Day or Solemnity uh, or a purple mask. And then you may have noticed last weekend I, I wore not a pink mask, but it actually was called Dusty Rose. <laughs> Rose is the color for Gaudete Sunday, which was last week. And so I had a fancy chasuble that was kind of purple and, and rose, which is the parish, the parishes. Uh, it's much nicer than the one I have, so I wore that one. Um, but what might you wear for Christmas? Now, actually, the, the colors of Christmas are not green and red, even though, I mean, you can see right here, like, a, right, see my little, um, oh, let's see, can I go in there? See, that's my, right there, er, that's my little stocking my sister Anne made for me. And, of course, the Christmas tree itself is green and got some other colors. But... <clears throat> Colors of Christmas is white and gold because it's solemnity. All solemnities are white and, and particularly gold. I'll be wearing gold vestments. I have some gold vestments I purchased particularly for Christmas and Easter. Um, so you might consider those colors to wear and maybe you can find a mask. I actually found some masks that are that color. Uh, hopefully if I can dig it up and find it, I will wear that uh, as just a way of also being, you know, well, wearing masks is not all that fun. Uh, let's make it some, let's make it fun. It's kind of my way of looking at it. So come to mass, please come home for Christmas of all the days. I saw lots of people come to our school Christmas um, concert and it was wonderful. It was wonderful. Uh, and also for confessions the previous week on Saturday the 10th, we had over 400 people there. Those are ways that we come together and people wore masks. But I want to encourage as we come know that we need you we want you to be with us it's so important to celebrate this most great solemnity great in the two highest solemnities right christmas and easter this solemnity is so important that we say please you're obliged to come it is a, the responsibility of a catholic christian to come celebrate the eucharist with your fellow catholics to recognize christ what he's done for us and receive him in communion so many people came to confession it was wonderful you know that the sign of the health of a community well, in one sense, could be how many people are coming to the church. But I think maybe even more telling is how many people are coming to confession. And what an amazing thing that was. So wonderful. 
uh, and I've been helping out with the other area parishes for their their uh, communal reconciliation services. And again, wonderful, wonderful, so so beautiful, and, and it encourages me, encourages I'm sure the other priests to make sure that we are doing our our things that we should be doing. That is going to confession, seeking out uh, forgiveness from God and from each other. And number three, the final thing. So when you come to Christmas to Christmas Mass, now though it's going to be Advent, the last weekend of Advent. This weekend we're going to hear. Um, the last of the, the four parts. So the parts were created, how God created us and loved us, captured what S Satan did and uh, how he um, captured us, how sin binds us, how we struggle in those things. And yet that's not the full story because Jesus himself rescued us, right? So knowing this, this great news, not good news, great news that he's rescued us, what's our response? What is our response to the greatest news that's ever happened? And I can't think of a better response than gratitude or thankfulness. So think about what you are thankful for. And as you come for Christmas, you may have a place that you like to sit. You may have a, an area that is your preference, but there's a lot of other people that will be coming. And imagine they're sitting in your seat. What's going to be your response? Is it going to be, hey, man, that's my chair. That's my pew. Those are my bun prints in that pew. What are you doing in my space? <laughs> or how awesome it is that somebody's here. I haven't seen them. I don't even know who these people are. It's so great to have them there. I'm happy to move to a different place and sit somewhere else or even stand if necessary so that they can have a place to relax and be present and welcomed here at Holy Trinity Catholic Church here in Beaverton. So think about that. Those are things. Uh, can you make room for others? Literally in the pews, but also in your hearts. So this weekend, I'm going to be focusing on that topic. What's our response? And I can't think of a better response than something of gratitude. So think about what it might be for you. I've just offered you one just now when you come to church. And let's ask God to come into our hearts this weekend. Transform our minds so that when people come to Christmas Mass, they will have encountered Jesus through you and through me, through the Eucharist, through the scriptures proclaimed. And until then, may God bless you, and I'll see you at church. Bye-bye.